So in this video, we're going to talk about bile acid synthesis and their conjugation to bile salts. And just as a quick note, there are many steps uh, and not all of them are shown. We're just talking about the basics, just a little overview of what's going on here. So first question is where does this all happen? What's the location? Well, as far as organs, this all happens in the liver. Okay. Now, as far as organelles go, some reactions occur in the ER, some in the mitochondria, some in the peroxisome, some also occur in the cytosol. We're not going to get too hung up on those details, uh, but just so you know, many organelles are involved in this process. Now, we saw previously that bile acids and bile salts, they have the steroid nucleus with the A, B, C, and D rings, and um, they're basically sterols or steroids. Um, and so they come from the steroid precursor, which is cholesterol. So we've got cholesterol here, and that's where we're going to start off as far as making bile acids and eventually conjugating them to bile salts. Okay, so the, the first step in, in producing bile acids is going to be to convert cholesterol into 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol. Um, and the difference between these two molecules is simply this, um, this hydroxyl group is added at that position. That position is the 7 position. Okay, And so we have that hydroxyl group added. And we, in order to do that, we need um, oxygen and, um, and, and the help of NADPH as well uh, to get this to go. And we can see here that these uh, reagents are um, reminiscent of what we would use by, with a mixed function oxidase. And the, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is a mixed function oxidase. It's an ER associated CYP450 enzyme, specifically called cholesterol 7 alpha hydroxylase. And that name should make sense. It's acting on cholesterol at the 7 position to, give, uh, to add a hydroxyl group. Um, and you'll notice that the cholesterol there is in um, parentheses, and the reason why it's in parentheses is because it's not always indicated, right? Sometimes it's just called 7-alpha hydroxylase, okay? But cholesterol tells you that it specifically acts on cholesterol. Um, and you'll also notice that the, there's parentheses here with the name 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol. Sometimes it's just called 7-hydroxycholesterol. Uh, the alpha isn't always mentioned, but that because that refers to stereochemistry. And in here, I didn't show the stereochemistry. Um, but that enzyme name should make sense. Now, something to, to note about this enzyme is that it's the rate limiting, and it catalyzes the rate limiting step of the pathway. That's the worst start I've ever drawn in my life. But this is a, the rate limiting uh, reaction, okay? A rate limiting step. And so, if it's the rate limiting step, what does that mean about it? It is regulated, okay? In fact, this enzyme is stimulated by um, excess cholesterol, right? So this excess cholesterol stimulates this, and it's at the transcriptional level, right? So it makes that it, it trend, makes that that gene is um, the gene for that hydroxylase is transcribed more, so we end up having more of that enzyme, and that should make sense if you if you're familiar with the fact that uh, excess cholesterol is actually excreted as um, as bile salts or, or um, and bile acids in the feces, so. It would make sense that if there's a bunch of cholesterol around, it would stimulate the production of um, bile acids and bile salts so as to get rid of that excess cholesterol. Okay, cool. Now it's also inhibited by the ultimate product of what it basically commits to, and that is bile acids. So where do we get those bile acids? Well, let's continue on with this pathway um, with 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol. And so we're going to have a series of reactions that end up giving us the, um, the bile acids. And these bile acids are here, cholic acid and uh, keno deoxycholic acid. And now they've only got 24 carbons. So a few things happen on the way here. And, and notice I, I wrote here many steps. Um, they're not all shown, of course. Um, but what things happened? Well, we um, we reduced we reduced the the carbon carbon double bond here. That's gone um, in in this molecule here and in here. That's no longer there. And also we've shortened the um, the uh, the side chain over here and oxidized it, right? We no longer have these 27 carbons. Uh, we have 24 and we have this uh, carboxylic acid group uh, in these two um, bile acids, okay? So um, let me get rid of the numbers there because it's getting a little bit messy, okay? Um, but basically those are the differences between those uh, those molecules. And also uh, in, in getting cholic acid, we also had this additional hydroxylation here so we added this hydroxyl group to get cholic acid. Uh, that isn't the case in um, in keno deoxycholic acid. But what's important to recognize is that these two compounds are 
uh, bile acids. Specifically, they are primary bile acids. They are the first bile acids that are made, and they are the product of um, the bile acid synthesis pathway, which basically is from from cholesterol, from cholesterol. Let's just scroll up just a tad. From cholesterol all the way to these bile acids, these primary bile acids. That is basically bile acid synthesis, right? Because we made our bile acids, okay? And so these bile acids go back and they can feed back negatively on this hydroxylase enzyme that catalyzes the rate limiting step in their production, okay? So that's it as far as bile acid synthesis, okay? But we mentioned also that we're gonna make bile salts through conjugation, so what's happening there? So let's scroll down a little bit to see what's going on here.